Welcome to this Sierra Club presentation on forests and climate. Forests are critical for people, wildlife, and the environment. They are home to more plants and animals than any other terrestrial biome. They purify the air we breathe and filter the water we drink. They mitigate flooding by acting as giant sponges, soaking up and gradually releasing rainwater. They build soil and prevent erosion. In short, they are vital to life on Earth. Historically, forests have also played a central role in maintaining the stability of local and regional climates, creating and cycling rainfall. As the climate grows increasingly unstable, they are one of the keys to solving the crisis we face, both because they store vast quantities of carbon already and because they have the potential to mitigate global warming by drawing down a significant portion of the excess carbon now in the atmosphere. In a recent report, the Dogwood Alliance notes that forests are the only proven system that can safely remove and store enough carbon dioxide from the atmosphere to keep global temperature rise below the 1.5 degrees Celsius limit needed to avoid the worst effects of climate change. Forests store more carbon than any other land-based ecosystem. The tallest forests store the most carbon. For example, what remains of the Pacific Coast's original ancient forests are among the greatest carbon sinks on the planet, storing orders of magnitude more than the shorter forests in the east and even in the tropics. Forests are also engines of carbon removal. Because they breathe in carbon dioxide and exhale oxygen, they are commonly referred to as the lungs of the world. Trees use sunlight to convert CO2 to sugar, some of which is used immediately for energy to fuel growth, but the rest combines with other ingredients to make wood, whose chemical composition is about half carbon. Because trees absorb carbon and store it in wood, many in the timber and building industries tout wood as a climate solution. A prominent example is the mass timber products like cross-laminated timber, or CLT, that can substitute for the steel and concrete traditionally used in taller building structures. CLT is a large wood panel made of multiple layers of softwood lumber stacked at right angles and glued together. The largest CLT panels made in North America today are about 10 feet wide, 40 feet long, and 12 inches thick. CLT panels are engineered and made to specification in the factory for a given project and shipped to the job site where the building is assembled. The core rationale is that substituting wood for steel and concrete can reduce a building's embodied carbon. Embodied carbon is calculated by measuring and aggregating the emissions generated from the extraction, manufacturing, transport, and use of building materials, estimated to account for roughly 10% of emissions globally. Given that a huge number of buildings are expected to be constructed in coming decades, reducing their embodied carbon is urgent, and substituting wood for non-renewable materials may seem like an obvious way to make progress. The assumption is that if wood displaces steel and concrete in building construction, the avoided emissions could be significant. What generally gets left out of considerations of the claimed climate advantages of wood use, however, is the impact of logging on forest carbon. As the name suggests, forest carbon refers to all of the carbon stored in the forest, including what's above ground in live and dead trees and other vegetation as well as carbon stored below ground in roots and soil. Logging results in losses of forest carbon at all scales, from individual trees to forest stands to entire landscapes. Logging causes the release of much of the carbon stored in trees through on-site decomposition or burning of roots and of logging slash, such as branches, leaves, and needles. More is lost as the log is processed into wood products and the downfall rots or is burned for power. Only about a third of the carbon in a tree is carried through to the end of the wood products processing chain and stored in wood products. At the stand level, if the original forest was mature, 
and subsequent logging occurs on cycles much shorter than the age of the oldest trees originally on the site, the forest will never reach its pre-logged carbon stores. For instance, replacing an old growth forest with a plantation can result in up to a 60% loss of carbon stores that will not be made up over time if, as is typical, the plantation is subsequently re-logged every 40 or 50 years. Industrial logging across large areas can be a major source of CO2 emissions, especially when it supplants mature forests with intensively managed tree farms. Logging accounts for 85% of emissions from U.S. forests, more than five times the emissions from forest conversion, fire, wind, insects, and natural tree mortality combined. Chemicals used in industrial forestry compound the problem. Of the massive amounts of nitrogen fertilizer applied, only half of, about half quickly goes into the atmosphere as the potent greenhouse gas nitrous oxide. When industrial forestry replaces mature natural forests with plantations, it creates a massive carbon debt that will only be paid back if the plantations are left alone for hundreds of years. The actual benefits of substituting wood for steel and concrete are hard to pin down because so much depends on the starting condition of the forest and the type of forestry practice. But we know for sure that if trees are left to grow instead of being cut down, they will continue to capture and store carbon in ever larger amounts, often for hundreds or even thousands of years, depending on the species. The timber industry says young trees grow faster than older trees, which is true. But the deeper truth is that as they grow, older trees sequester and store a lot more carbon each year. A five-year-old sapling grows fast, but it is so small that it stores relatively little carbon in a year. A 100-year-old tree grows slower than the sapling, but it has much more volume. So a smaller growth rate translates into a larger amount of wood added and carbon stored. The timber industry also promotes burning wood to generate energy, also known as bioenergy or biomass energy, as a climate solution, claiming that it is carbon neutral because the carbon emitted when wood is burned is recaptured when new trees grow. But when forests are logged to make wood pellets and then replanted, it can take anywhere from 40 to 100 years for the forest carbon released by logging and burning to be reabsorbed. And the science shows we can't wait that long. Also, burning wood for electricity releases up to 50% more carbon dioxide than burning coal per unit of electricity generated. The reality is that to avoid emissions and remove carbon from the atmosphere, it is best not to log at all. But where logging occurs, it is far better to use the timber to make long-lived wood products than it is to make products like pellets and paper, whose embodied carbon will be released in the very short term. Improving forest management and increasing forest recovery and protection are the key ways that forests can help in the fight against climate change. The steps we need to take are as follows. First, logging of the world's remaining primary forests must cease. Research indicates that forest carbon is maximized where there are the highest levels of forest protection and the least amount of logging or no logging at all. Therefore, we should permanently protect primary forests, particularly but not limited to those that are the most carbon rich, and these are mostly found on U.S. federal forest lands. Second, we must allow many of the forests that have been previously logged to grow back and recover their ecological and carbon storage potential. This is called proforestation and is one of the most safe, effective, and low-cost approaches to carbon removal and storage available. In some cases, this process of recovery can be speeded through human intervention aimed at true restoration. Where logging continues, another key is lengthening rotations, the time interval between cuts. In general, forest management that is less intensive, for example, smaller, more widely distributed clear cuts or selective logging, results in less overall emissions and more intensive management such as industrial tree farms that rely on large, frequent clear cuts and applications of greenhouse gas emitting fertilizers, herbicides, and pesticides. 
Tree plantation should not be established at the expense of natural forests. Recent research indicates that forests that are more structurally complex sequester more carbon than even age plantations. Also, since forests that are managed as ecosystems rather than monocultures are more resilient in the face of climate change and the increased threat of pests, fire, and drought, many existing plantations should be restored to a more natural condition. Finally, afforestation. Planting trees in areas where there are none currently and it is ecologically appropriate to do so, for example, in fallowed fields, is desirable because it brings carbon benefits and will increase wood supply in the longer term. Note, however, that it takes decades for newly planted trees to achieve the levels of carbon removal and storage that can be realized much more quickly through proforestation, restoration, and climate-friendlier forestry. Reforms such as these would not only improve the management of forest carbon, they would yield numerous other important environmental benefits, including less harm to wildlife habitat, relatively higher ecological complexity and biological diversity, and reduce negative impacts on soil and water quality. As it happens, what is better for carbon is better for all of the other critical ecosystem values and services forests provide. Climate-friendlier forestry requires a long-term view of forest management and an appreciation for the full array of environmental and social benefits that responsibly managed forests offer. There is a trade-off between maximizing the short-term financial return on managed forests and enhancing the carbon and other environmental benefits of forestry. Forest certification is one way to incentivize climate-friendlier forestry. The Forest Stewardship Council, or FSC, is a voluntary program whose standards, among the available forest certification programs, best reflect and support climate-friendlier forestry. FSC standards require the protection of high conservation value forests, including but not limited to old growth. They also require less intensive practices and are permitted by regulation, including wider stream buffers, smaller cut blocks, and higher levels of retention which is to say, leaving more live trees behind after a timber harvest. An environmental organization called EcoTrust recently completed a study that compared outcomes under business as usual forestry at the regulatory floor with those of FSC certified forests in Oregon and Washington. EcoTrust found that FSC always stored more carbon between 25% and 60% more than business as usual on average. FSC could increase timber yields over the longer term. FSC requires larger stream buffers than business as usual in Oregon, taking substantial areas of land out of timber production to protect streams and resulting in lower average timber yields but higher stores of forest carbon. The inescapable conclusion is that where logging occurs, the timber industry needs to transition to climate-friendlier forestry. This is why Sierra Club supports FSC certification of private lands. Climate-friendlier forestry is a key piece of the puzzle. Now let's talk about the biggest piece of all, increased protection. Forests need to be the nation's first line of climate change defense. What's left of carbon-dense primary forests in the U.S. are largely on federally owned lands where significant but incomplete conservation agreements have secured some protections. We need to protect them completely, and this is why Sierra Club advocates for the creation of a forest carbon trust that would identify and protect carbon-dense primary forests, as well as areas suitable for proforestation or ecologically appropriate restoration and afforestation. In the U.S., Sierra Club advocates for ending commercial logging on federal public lands. This will not only safeguard remaining primary forests, but also allow previously logged areas to recover and store far more carbon. The Northwest Forest Plan offers a precedent. Its implementation in the national forests of the Pacific Northwest has succeeded in turning the region into a carbon sink by allowing for proforestation. This process must be allowed to continue and extended to other regions. 
An important component of the Forest Carbon Trust would be the acquisition of private forest lands from willing sellers, putting them into protected public ownership to further increase climate change mitigation potential and grow large interconnected reservoirs of biodiverse, resilient ecosystems that will enable species migration as temperatures change. The Forest Carbon Trust would also form the foundation for a robust green economy in rural areas, providing jobs for local communities encompassing a range of skills. Finally, this campaign can work in conjunction with efforts to eliminate fossil fuel extraction from federal public lands, a keep it in the forest, keep it in the ground approach that would amplify climate benefits even more. Protecting federal public lands from logging and fossil fuel extraction can also advance environmental justice and equity in important ways. Protected forests reduce flooding, which is increasingly impacting vulnerable communities across the Midwest and Southeast. And by taking a significant step toward mitigating climate change, we will help curb rising sea levels that are threatening many frontline coastal communities that do not have the financial resources to easily move inland to higher ground. In closing, here are a few ways you can contribute to efforts to elevate forests as a climate solution within Sierra Club and beyond. You can join Sierra Club's forests and climate team. We are a group of volunteers in the club's grassroots network. Among other things, we are working to lay the groundworks for a national Sierra Club forests and climate campaign. Another thing you can do is to support climate smart forestry by looking for the FSC logo when you use paper or wood products. Google One Simple Action FSC for more information. One more thing you can do is to help us spread the word. Much more information and a longer version of this program is available on the Sierra Club's Forests and Climate website. Thanks.